What's up guys, hope you're all having a great week. Today I have a video that's going to walk us through one of my real estate investment calculators that I use for all of my Burr investment deals. You absolutely do not need a four year finance degree from this university to understand this video or to be able to create a calculator like this on your own. With that being said, let's go ahead and get started and make sure you do that. Welcome to the wonderful world of Microsoft Excel, where today I'm going to take you through my Burr Real Estate Investment Calculator. To begin, you see this big logo in the center of my screen, and if you're new to the channel, that is my real estate investment business. You can learn a little bit more about that at bluechip-realestate.com. Now to begin, I always start my calculators with a notes section. I think this is very important to just be on the same page with everybody who may look at this Excel sheet especially with myself, you know, if I'm looking at a lot of these deals in a day, I want to take notes on them. So that way I'm not forgetting any important details about the deal. For today's case in this video, I've left some notes for all of you. So um, this is a sample deal with real numbers on a property that I'm familiar with. And I left some notes here on the organization of this calculator. So I think this is very important and this can be your biggest takeaway from today. And that is to color code the different items of your calculator. So for me, I have dark gray on all of my headings. So buy, finance and rehab, refinance, rent, etc. I have blue for all of my line items, such as the seller's name, phone number, email address, timeline, motivation to sell. Next, I have all of these white cells, and I'm referring to a box like this. This means that this cell contains a formula, and I'll show you what I mean here. You see, any box that is white contains formulas. All of these light gray boxes are actual inputs that I have to put in myself. Those are being changed on a deal by deal basis. It just depends on what the specifics are of that deal. So make sure you color code what's a formula, what isn't. That way you aren't going in and messing up formulas, which in turn messes up your calculation and can lead to a poor decision. Because this is a Burr investment calculator, I have it broken down into the different aspects of the Burr. So for buy, I break that down into the actual deal as well as the financing. Some items that I really look for in a deal, you know, I want to know their motivation to sell. When are they looking to sell? Um, additionally, this is where I put my purchase price, the closing costs, um, as well as property comps here down at the bottom. I usually look at three comps. I want to know the address, their most recent valuation, projected rent, amenities, and whatnot. This is what helps me set that after repair value, which is the most important aspect of a Burr calculation. Next, with our financing, I think it's really important to break down your financing into the different types that you know you'll use. So I know that I'm going to be using a home equity line of credit or a HELOC on the majority of my deals, such as this deal. So on this deal, I have all-in costs of $89,844.33. So I'm going to take out a HELOC for $90,000 to cover all of my all-in costs. If I wanted to use a traditional mortgage, I could enter in that mortgage value I'm looking for right here, and, and then it would calculate all the details of that payment for me. Additionally, private capital could be good to use if you bring in an investor on the deal. Now we go on to the rehab portion of the project. So as I mentioned earlier, the most important number in this entire spreadsheet is the after repair value. You need to try to be as accurate as possible because this has the biggest financial impact on your investment. Um, uh, some other important items in this section are the rehab budget as well as the rehab timeline. For your timeline, make sure you include not only the amount of time it will take for you to complete all the repairs, but as well as find a renter. Additionally, this is where I calculate all of my holding costs, which includes you know my debt payments, taxes and insurance, utilities. Down here, I can type in all of the the different aspects of the repairs and the and the project that we'll be undertaking now we're on to the refinance where i want to know my current loan information as well as the refi loan so after the bank sends the appraiser out there i expect this to come back with a value of one hundred twenty thousand, and then the bank will loan me 80 percent of that one hundred twenty thousand at five and a half percent interest over a 25 year term so then that go ahead and then calculates my monthly loan payment, annual loan payment, etc. 
next down here, this is a, the number I really like looking for, my equity creation. So this is telling me, am I going to be able to pull any money out of this deal in the cash out refinance, or am I going to have to put more money into the deal? So in this example, I'm able to pull out $6,155.67 because my refi loan is that much greater than all of my all-in costs. If this property switched up its after repair value to $110,000, I would have to bring an additional $1,844.33 to the deal after I do the refinance loan. But for this deal's sake, we're going to stick with that ARV of $120,000. Next, let's look at the rent. For the rent, I like to have an executive summary up here that just sums everything up, makes it easy for someone to find. Also, I like to break down the rent. So if it's one to four units, this is an easy way to separate those rents. So if, let's say it's a duplex. I know one rents for 550, the other for 450. It's really easy to input that there as well. If two rented for 450 and one for 550, it's still very simple. So give yourself some options on how you can input your rent. Additionally, you want to view all your expenses broken down into their different categories. So you have debt payment, you have all of your utilities, taxes and insurance, HOA, all of those expenses. Um, on a single family home, I don't include utilities. So that's why you won't see any expenses in there for the utilities. You also want to budget for vacancy repairs and maintenance as well as capital expenditures. This money may not be coming out of your pocket each month, but it's important to budget for them in the event they do. Single family homes, they usually use 5% for vacancy, repairs and maintenance as well as capex. This can range from five to 10% each. It depends on the condition of the property. If I just fully renovated this property, I don't expect it to have a lot of repairs and maintenance or capital expenditures such as a new roof or water heater. Property management, this is gonna run you 10% pretty much across the board if you're hiring a good property manager. And those numbers are taken out of your gross monthly rent. Next comes the fun part. And this is where we get to look at how much money are we making? So I like to look at some different profit centers of real estate and you have four of them. You have tax benefits, you have cash flow, you have loan pay down or equity in the property as well as home appreciation. So these profit centers, first one, capital recapture. This is basically examining that equity in the property um, and that equity creation I talked about earlier. Am I able to pull money out tax-free in the cash out refinance? And then you have your monthly and annual cash flow as well as your property equity. So when you do a cash, when you do a refinance, the bank will only loan you 80% of its total value. So that means you automatically have 20% of the value in equity in addition to all of the loan pay down that you have in your first year while re renting out the property that number gets pulled from this refi loan tab on my sheet where it adds together the total principal payments for that year next i want to look at my projected taxable income so i know that i'm going to be able to depreciate my property each year on the books so is my i'll take my annual cash flow and divide it by that projected um, that projected depreciation to come up with my annual taxable income. This is not an exact number. It just gives me an idea if I'm gonna be showing income or a loss on the books, because if I'm showing a loss on the books, that's fine. That can offset other income. Whereas you guys can see on this profit center sheet that I'm able to pull out that much equity free as well as my monthly cash flow. Um, and last, projected home appreciation. This is just my estimations for what the property will increase in value in year one. You don't actually realize this value until you sell the property. So do not count on it for, um, you know, for additional income that year. It's just something that can happen when you go to sell the property. So the last set of returns I want to look at are the internal rate of return, the cash on cash return, and and additionally break down my monthly cash flow even further. So I wanna view my levered internal rate of return, which factors in my debt payments as well as my taxes. Um, I won't take the time to bore you through an entire internal rate of return calculation, but I do have an infinite internal rate of return on this deal because all of my cash flows are positive. And that's because in that first year, I financed more than 100% of my total costs. If I had to put money into the deal, then that infinite, this value would change. 
Same thing with my cash on cash. I have no money into this deal, so that is why it is an infinite return. Monthly cash flow is just taken from my levered cash flow and divide that by 12 for each year and then calculate the average. With that being said, that takes you through the majority of this calculator. If you have any questions at all about the calculator or some of the actual specific cell calculations, then please feel free to reach out to me. You know, I'm happy to explain it and continue to walk through this. I have made additional videos that will explain these in more detail, so you can ask for those if you would like. Last thing, the last part of the calculator, we got to go all the way to the bottom, and there it is. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. It helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. With that being said, I hope all of you guys have a great week, and thank you for your time.